Welcome to Beyond the Coverage, I'm Chris Horner. In today's edition, I wanna talk about how hard the sport can be, even on the top riders. We see it in the Cycling News Press article that with Primoz Roglic isn't gonna start Liege best on Liege after that stage four crash at the Basque Country. He crashed in stage three too, but it was stage four that really just affected this 2024 season massively because now Primoz Roglic isn't starting Liege best on Liege. Rimko Abnepal went down on that crash. He's not gonna start Liege best on Liege either and of course we're still waiting to hear what the race schedule is going to look like for Jonas Finigo. There was over a dozen riders going down in that accident on stage four and a lot of guys are going to have a ton of recovery time. But One guy I want to focus on a little bit too is Julian Alaphilippe. When I read his article in Cycling News Today it said that his left knee was giving him problems because he has a fractured fibula and of course was causing him knee pain on the left leg. So why did the Frenchman start the races that were coming up? Well, first off, he might not have known, it sounds like through the article, that after the crash that he had at Strada Bianchi before the cam cameras came on, so we didn't get to see it. He knew he had problems then, and his leg was sore, but he still started Milan San Remo. And it sounds like after Milan San Remo, where he finished ninth overall on that, on that one day first monument here in 2024, that's when he went and got the x-rays, and then he could see the fractures. Well, it wasn't in the article where it says his team is pushing him to do the upcoming classics when we're talking about E3 Saxo Bank and we're talking about Tour of Flanders along with Dwarfs of Flanders. It wasn't his team telling him that he had to do those races. It was his team telling him that he could make the decision. But why it, are you allowing the rider to make that decision if you know he has some fractured bones in the legs? At that moment, if you're pseudo quick step, you just say, no, don't do it. Because if you want to look at it from a writer's point of view, which is what I'm going to try to bring you up here on Beyond the Coverage, Julian Alaphilippe, when he's sitting there after the x-ray and, and he sees the leg is in pain and with the fractures and he's finished Milan San Remo with some pain in that left knee, at that moment the writer's thinking, well, if I do flesh, if I do Liège, if I do Amstel Gold, maybe I don't get the leadership role versus if I show up at these earlier classic races here and then finish with Flanders, there I can be the sole leader of the team. The legs bother me, but I made it through Milan San Remo, almost 300 kilometers, huh? It's 285K race, but then you have the pre-neutral the pre section and the afterwards when they make you ride to the hotel, the guy's riding 300 kilometers on a broken leg. It's fractured. There's a big time difference between a fracture and a break. All fractures are breaks, but not all breaks are fractures. And if you have any kind of accident, you want it to be followed up when the doctor says your leg is broken with, Doc, is it broken or is it a fracture? There's a big time difference between a fracture and a break, but the doctor will always tell you it's a break. But the rider's hearing it's a fracture. The rider's thinking, Julian Alaphilippe, in this case, well, I finished 300 kilometers of riding on my bike, and it's just a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe I can make it into these classic seasons. But... When you look at the team, like I said, the doctors, the directors, especially the director sportif, the manager there, Patrick Lefebvre, he should be calling up his ace rider, Julian Alaphilippe, who's paying a boat ton of money to, and he should be saying, hey, take it easy. Let's hold you back. Let's get you ready for other events. But instead, we've seen articles after articles where Patrick Lefebvre is just drilling his riders. It all started back, simply enough, if we want to go back to the shortest period of time, with Sam Bennett where Sam Bennett won the Tour de France green jersey in 2020, won two stages, beat Peter Sagan for the green jersey, and then the next year in 2021, Sam Bennett was having a stellar beginning of the season. He's winning stages at Paris Nice. He's winning stages at the UAE Tour, and then when the Tour de France got around, he was having some knee problems, and Patrick Lefebvre just went at him in the press big time. We all remember those articles, but that's a director sportif that's drilling one of his top riders on the team who's in pain. Once a rider's in pain, especially with something broken or some kind of irritation in the knee, you don't need anything broken in the knee in order to be in pain. Knee problems exist in cycling big time, so if you're a director sportif and especially a manager of the age of Patrick Lefebvre, you should understand that if a rider has knee problems, he has knee problems. You cannot look at a rider from the outside and go, oh, he doesn't have any knee problems, he's just making this up. There is no way to figure out if a rider's making up knee problems, and when you have a rider that's been winning like Sam Bennett was in 2021, you gotta assume he'd wanna start the Tour de France, but of course, we all know the history there with Patrick Lefebvre basically humiliating Sam Bennett in the press, and then Sam Bennett leaving and going to Bora Hansgrohe. Then, the bully, Patrick Lefebvre, 
continues to start bullying there on Julian Alaphilippe this season and late into last year's season two, where we've seen all the articles where he's dissing Julian Alaphilippe. As a writer, I can tell you 100%, this would not be appreciated on my side, especially with the experience and the results that Julian Alaphilippe has. The Frenchman has over 40 wins, big time wins, Two Road World Championships in 20 and 21, and they were magnificent wins, especially the one in Leuven in Belgium. That was absolutely one of the most spectacular one-day races that I have experienced. He was remarkable there. We look at what he's done in last year. Even last year, he won Fon, Fon Ardèche Classic down in the south of France at the beginning of the season, and then he won a stage at Dauphiné. There's no way the Frenchman, some, some super domestique or some wannabe domestique or some terrible pro. This is a classic rider that can win big time races. And when you win a stage at Dauphiné in the sprint conditions that I saw him last year, he definitely is capable of going even bigger because we've seen it with those two road world championships. We saw it at the 2019 Tour de France when he dominated the 2019 Tour de France for the first two and a half weeks. Then the Frenchman got a little bit deep into the mountains and fell apart. But he wore the race leader's yellow jersey. He was spectacular and he highlighted every mountain stage we watched in 2019 all the way into the last two mountain stages where of course Egon Bernal went on to win that year's Tour de France. But then the Frenchman comes back the next year, wins more again at the Tour de France and puts on the race leader's yellow jersey. If it wasn't for the crash at LBL two years ago in 2020, that's the one mark where you can start seeing where the Frenchman's form starts to dip from those epic highs that we got to enjoy for those two, three seasons where he was just putting on a display that was magical to watch. Tactically, I didn't always agree with how his tactics went, but the display and the beauty of it while you're watching from the Chesterfield was undeniable that he was exceptional. When you go back now to this fractured leg after Milan San Remo and your Patrick Lefebvre just drilling him, this is the problem when a director and a manager of a team doesn't take care of his riders. He let the Frenchman decide what he was going to do when easily the team should have stepped in and said, hey, you have a fractured, if it's bothering you at all, go ahead and rest it. Let's wait, let's let you heal, let's let you come back to what we saw in 2019 and 2020, that Julian Alaphilippe, those two Road World Championship wins. Let's see that. You still got Amstel, Flesh, and Liège left. We'll just change your program. Wasn't on the program originally because he was going to race the earlier classics and come into Flanders. But, but once you start knowing that there's possibilities of other riders crashing, once Julian Alaphilippe crashed twice at Omlu Het Newsblown, once at Strada Bianchi, once he's getting x-rays after Milan San Rio where the Frenchman got ninth and clearly has to have some kind of form, once you see x-rays with some fractures, it's time to pull the Frenchman, just tell him, hey, rest. But the problem is, Patrick Lefebvre has already said he's not worth the money he's paying him. He's already dissed his family. He's already dissed his baby mama. He's already upset the whole chemistry there. So Julian Alaphilippe knows that he needs that contract with a different team for next year. And he knows it gets harder to find that contract if you want to go into the races where, of course, you might have Remco Ebnepoel showing up being the team leader when we're talking about LBL, Flash, and Amstel and races like that, that more are ideal for Remco Ebnepoel. Of course, now we know he's not doing the races, but way back when, maybe that's why he picked Julian Alaphilippe, picked the earlier races that weren't really ideal for the Frenchman, when the most ideal races, absolutely, no no way, no argument around it, the most ideal races is Amstel, Flesch, and Liege, best on Liege, because of course the Frenchman's won Flesch Wallone three times, and the last time he won Flesch Wallone, he had the beat of on-form Primoz Roglic, where the Slovenian was throwing in a huge attack with 400 meters to go, only to have the Frenchman catch him in the last 75 meters and then come around the Slovenian to win what was nothing short of a remarkable Flesch Wallone for a third victory from the Frenchman Julian Alaphilippe. Now I know Julian Alaphilippe said in the article that it was his decision to keep racing, but it's his decision with the pressure that Patrick Lefebvre has been putting on the Frenchman throughout the last season, season and a half, which should have never been put on because the Frenchman Julian Alaphilippe did not have excuses for why he's been underperforming. He has reasons why he's been underperforming, and they're the most easiest reasons to explain. He crashed at LBL two years ago, and it was a massive crash with punctured lungs and ribs broken all over the place. That type of ride that he's having 
all the way up to LBL, and then every reason why he hasn't performed well, well, as he used to anyways, he has still performed well. Remember, he won early last season. He won Dolphin a, a stage in the sprint. He has been on good form, but he's had those reasons. And if you're Patrick Lefebvre, all that pressure you put on him as now is what costs Julian Alaphilippe a big time result here in the early part of the season because of the stress and the pressure that the Frenchman had to make when he's getting the x-ray done after Milan San Real. That's how hard this sport can be as a professional athlete that you have won 40 plus races throughout your career, two road world championships, wore the race leader's yellow jersey at the Tour de France, and you have to decide whether or not after Milan San Remo if it's a good idea to take some time off your bike when your left fibia is broken. This is a hard man sport. I got to believe some of the director sportifs, especially Patrick Lefebvre, you need to do a better job directing your riders. It is not going to work that same mentality, that football mentality of just putting pressure on riders and calling riders out in the public. It's absolutely shameful to see it. And I, need to, and I think once we see that Julian Alaphilippe doesn't perform well here in the early parts of the season while racing with a fractured leg, that alone should be enough information for Patrick Lefebvre to go, hey, I'm a knucklehead up here. I need to stop doing this, what I'm doing. It's not working for Julian Alaphilippe, who I'm paying millions for. It didn't work for Sam Bennett. It's certainly not working for the women out there who are reading all, all of his sexist comments that he posts way, way too often that now we see in the press where he has to apologize for. This kind of director sportif just isn't needed anymore. He's got to change his ways. And guys, I have gone through many times where I've had breaks in my career. Here with Sonia Duvall in 2005, I ended up breaking my leg. Machine, who is the director for UAE Team Emirates, was my director then with Sonia Duvall. And once I went back to the U.S. and got the MRI done where it showed multiple fractures in my upper leg and left leg, Machine didn't put any pressure on me. Stay home, heal up, we'll see you when you're ready to go. When in 2005, when I was racing for Prime Alliance, it was Kirk Willett who was the director sportif. I broke my foot being a knucklehead riding my YZ250 through a bunch of whoops and broke my foot when I cased the frame on the, one of the big whoops. I went to my director sportif said, I think the foot's broken. He said, no problem. The season's been great. Go ahead, recover, take whatever time you need and we'll see you when it's ready to go. No pressure. That should have been the way it was handled with Julian Alaphilippe after Milan San Remo, where you see the Frenchman get ninth. The director sportif, the owner of the team, the manager of the team, Patrick Lefebvre, should have just come up and said, hey, there's no pressure. These races are not live or die for us right now. Remco Abnapol has already been winning races. Tim Miller has already been winning races. We're cl our classic season has not been as spectacular as the Wolfpack would like but you're clearly not 100% on form. We are already sending you to races that weren't the ideal races for you because clearly the ideal race is a flesh alone in Liège, best on Liège. So why don't we just hold you out, see what happens. We'll go week by week and see how you feel. And if it heals up in time, maybe we fit you in for Amstel, Flesh or Liège. And if not, we'll fit you in somewhere else. And especially Patrick Lefebvre, why is Julian Alaphilippe going to the Giro? He should be going to the Tour de France and backing up one Remco Abnapol because you don't have to look any further back than, of course, when Remco Abnapol won the Vuelta a España, that it was Julian Alaphilippe that was taking care of him all the way through the first 10 stages of that year's Vuelta, spectacularly looking after the Belgium rider who went on to win that Vuelta a España. So in my book, when I look at the Frenchman Julian Alaphilippe, Right now, when I see Patrick Lefebvre signing other riders like Mikhail Landa, you already have a climber on your team. He's called Julian Alaphilippe. You just need to get Julian Alaphilippe back to the kind of condition that we saw in 2019, 2020, and 2021 when he was spectacular. That rider is still in that body. You just need to give him the push that he needs, the positive enforcement push, not the throw down hard on you and disrespect his whole family that we've seen in your press releases about Julian Alaphilippe. Back off a little bit, let the Frenchman heal, and let's see that spectacular Frenchman come back to a Tour de France and help Remco Abnapol there. Now he's set to do the Giro, so hopefully he recovers in time. Before then, it looks like he will. If it's a small fracture, he's probably just gonna need a couple weeks rest, but the Giro is super close. So right now, even that could be in doubt when I'm reading the press that Julian Alaphilippe's fracture fibia on his left leg is still giving him problems. So 
take the time to give the Frenchman the time, and then we'll see that marvelous form from Julian Alaphilippe come back that we're so used to watching and so miss so much up here on Beyond the Coverage in the Butterfly Effect. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon.